grey seals and harbour seals are not only inquisitive and playful, they also need clean waters that are teeming with fish. Both of them can be found around what must be Europe's wildest shoreline, the coast of Brittany. The French Riviera of the North is a term used of Brittany. The lighthouses on a number of offshore islands mark France's westernmost extremities to guide ships on the difficult course between the coastline and the islands. The many idyllic coves with their white sanded beaches are so tranquil. But the impressive, often very powerful, white-topped waves rushing towards the craggy cliffs underline the fact that the Atlantic to the northwest of France is seldom peaceful. In the bay off the town of Melon, the boats are regularly left high and dry. The tidal range here is six meters, which is two to three times that on the German North Sea coast. Whether you're an amateur yachtsman or a fisherman, the tide waits for no man. Six hours later and the picture has changed. This fantastic change occurs with clockwork precision, thanks to the moon. There are many, often very small, islands off the coast here, only a handful populated. By humans, that is. Harbour seals discovered these islands and have taken them over. Steep cliffs are no use to these animals, whose motion on land is somewhat clumsy. They need flat, sandy beaches. Here they can really lie back and relax. Relaxation time can take hours and the seals can be very flexible when it comes to basking in the warm sun. In between their hunting trips, harbour seals regularly come back to the beach to rest. but also to give birth. The mother immediately notes the scent of the pup, which is how they can always identify each other later. This is an essential aspect of survival for the pup. If the pup is abandoned, it will produce a loud wailing noise. Seals always come onto land to rest, but to fill their hungry stomachs, they have to go back into the sea. This is where it gets serious. Underwater, these animals, so clumsy on land, transform into agile, maneuverable swimmers. The tail flippers are both a powerful drive system and a rudder. 
When swimming slowly, the harbor seal will use its front flippers as a steering aid to turn more efficiently. When they are hunting fish, they need to maneuver quickly. Harbor seals may gather together, but they're not really social animals. Their contact phases are generally short. However, these two seem to have discovered something in common. The younger harbor seals hug the sea bottom and search for crabs and mollusks to eat, while the older ones mainly hunt fish. Their coloring varies widely. There are light and dark species. Perhaps a bit of hanky-panky? During courtship, things can get quite rough if there are several males trying to impress a female. One thing is for sure, harbor seals are most definitely playful and inquisitive. What can be hiding behind that one big black eye? The animal is caught between insecurity and curiosity. But the camera has an irresistible appeal. Shots like these are not particularly difficult with these receptive animals. The seal's whiskers are its hands, extremely sensitive and designed to enable it to orientate itself in murky waters and detect prey. Off the coast of Brittany, there are large numbers of harbor seals. The plentiful supply of fish and the relatively clean water attract them. But not so long ago, this paradise was on the verge of destruction. The Saint Mathieu headland, whose lighthouse towers over a ruined abbey, is no doubt one of the most attractive places in Brittany. As legend would have it, traders who brought the body of St. Matthew home were rescued as if by a miracle when their ship foundered here. The legend is easy to believe in view of the innumerable rocks and often tempestuous sea. A shipwreck of a different kind only 40 years ago had a less happy ending. During a storm, the Amoco Cadiz oil tanker ran aground on rocks, broke apart and sank. Over 220,000 tons of crude oil spilled into the sea and contaminated more than 350 kilometers of France's shoreline. The wreck is now a life-filled attraction, popular among amateur divers. Many different animal species have long since populated the wreck. Divers have only one hour to explore while the tide is at its peak. There's a certain morbid fascination about a ship's last resting place. This one attracts many divers and allows them to play hide and seek with the dangers. The ship is coated with a veritable jungle of algae but there's no time to explore now. We need to get back to the surface. High tide changes to low tide. 
It may look harmless from the land, but underwater it's a different matter. The powerful tides racing back out to sea leave no stone unturned. Diving would be extremely hazardous. These strong tidal shifts do have their good sides. The powerful currents swirl up large volumes of nutrients from the depths and promote the growth of lush kelp forests. In terms of their biodiversity, these underwater jungles are the marine equivalents of tropical forests. Off the Ile de Wesson, France's northwesternmost point, a grey sea was attracted to the rich fishing in the kelp forests. They are the second most common seals off the French Atlantic coast, noticeably larger than the harbour seal and with an elongated head. No less agile than their smaller cousins, they're perfectly adapted to a life as fish hunters. This one comes across for a quick inspection, but then withdraws to the kelp forests, where individual Laminaria hyperborea, or tangled seaweed stems, can reach over two meters in height. Kelp forests are on a par with coral reefs as the most productive habitats in the world's oceans, as they offer both protection and a source of food for many different species. A European limpet is on its way to find algae. It may not be able to withdraw inside its shell like other snails, but it can attach itself so firmly to a rock that it can hardly be prized off perfect protection. The hermit crab, on the other hand, prefers a different shape of shell in which to hide its vulnerable rear end. Here it's just moving house. The old one was getting too small. Now it can go off in search of food, safe in its new shell. Sea anemones, on the other hand, have to be satisfied with whatever floats past their tentacles. They spend their whole life attached to the rocks. European fan worms extend their crown of feeding appendages and filter out plankton from the water. If they sense danger, they can retract rapidly inside their tube. Shrimps would be far too bulky for the worms, but not for a sea anemone. The cat shark would also not shy away from a juicy shrimp. Thanks to its excellent camouflage, it can lie on the seabed in wait, and its attacks are often totally unexpected. But the anglerfish pushes camouflage up to the next level. When it extends its fake fishing rod as bait, many an unsuspecting fish will fall for it. Some creatures that are not born with camouflage built in, like the common spider crab, simply improvise a cloak of invisibility. Spider crabs are a form of crab, but have noticeably longer, spindly legs in comparison with other species, which is where they get their name from. They can grow to an impressive size of 20 centimeters in diameter. 
To prevent the cat shark that has spider crabs right at the top of its shopping list from finding them so easily, these long-legged crabs painstakingly place small pebbles, algae, shell splinters, and anything else that's lying around on top of their carapace. In this way, they gradually resemble their environment to an increasing extent. Sometimes it takes a while until they feel that everything is in place. On older crabs, the algae have developed thick bushes that make the camouflage even more effective. Camouflage pays for itself, one way or the other. The dense kelp forests are an ideal nursery for many fish. These two cat sharks are engaged in preliminary family planning. Their courtship can take quite a while. Their behavior here shows clearly that not all sharks have to keep swimming to be able to breathe. That may indeed be true of some species, but most of the ground living sharks can remain motionless for hours on end without suffocating. So these two can take their time. These mermaids' purses Sharks' egg capsules were laid here by another female. The tendrils, which are about a metre long if unravelled, are for attaching the capsules to plants. After mating, the two go their separate ways. The male will play no part in protecting or rearing the young. The female, on the other hand, will now look for suitable places to attach her mermaid's purses. The female cat shark can produce up to 20 capsules. As the embryos develop, they sometimes make swimming movements, which pumps fresh water through the permeable capsule walls for it to breathe. After a few months, the baby shark will hatch. It's only 10 centimeters long. Right from the start, it has to fend for itself and has to eat immediately. Shrimps are a welcome tidbit, both for the youngsters and their parents. Thanks to the thousands of electric sensors on their noses, cat sharks can quickly sense their presence. Off the Brittany coast, cat sharks are very plentiful and can grow to an impressive length of half a metre. Provided they don't end up in their early days as a soup fin shark's lunch, here, they're fighting over a different prey. They appear to be more aggressive than they actually are. Soupfin sharks that can grow to around one meter are considered to be harmless to humans. Using their nose, more pointed than other sharks, they never tire of searching the sea floor. Using their electric sensors, with which their noses are well equipped, they can locate fish, crabs and mollusks hiding in the sand. The name soupfin shark is a clear indication that many populations of these tasty sharks are under threat. Fortunately, this does not apply to the population of Brittany. This wild, craggy arrangement of islands is a nursery not only for fish. 
The archipelago of the Seven Islands, Les Sept Îles, lies around 10 kilometers off the coast of Peros Girec. They were declared a nature reserve right back in 1912 and are the oldest nature reserve in Brittany. And for a good reason, several colonies of grey seal have made this their home. In the mating period, the animals gather on the flat sandy beaches. The much larger, heavier males can weigh up to 300 kilograms. When they're vying for the female's attentions, they can get short of breath. It doesn't look as if the female is fully convinced about her admirer's intentions. The foreplay period can last hours. Often the male will switch to a more willing female partner. The heavy males are not built like bulls with their muscular necks for nothing. They will often engage in serious fights and are likely to take home many bites to the neck. These two are obviously just taking part in a harmless game. It takes the males six to eight years to become sexually mature, but they often do not actually mate until they are 10. Until then, they don't stand a chance against the older males. Life has not always been this easy for the gray seal. In earlier days, they were hunted. There were even payments to bounty hunters. They were felt to be competing with the fishermen. Today, seals are protected almost everywhere. Around 100,000 of them live in the Eastern Atlantic now. Whoever wins the fight is allowed to woo the female. The loser decides to make an exit. Perhaps he'll be luckier underwater. Grey seals do not only mate on dry land. This female is more interested in something quite different. But as with small children, if there's no response, they lose interest. The male is following every movement. Perhaps he could try now to chat up the lady. She's obviously not completely averse to the idea. If mating is successful, the female will give birth on land in about a year and suckle her young for four weeks. After that, a male will woo the female again for as long as it takes until she is ready to mate.
In this way, the two of them, together or with other partners, will ensure that the population of grey seals along the coast of Brittany has a future. Les Sept Îles are not only famous among nature lovers for their grey seals. The island in the archipelago the furthest from the coast, Île Rousique, is home to one of the largest colonies of northern Gannet in Europe. The busiest time of the year on this tiny island is in March and April. Thousands of the birds are in breeding mode. Every year they return to the preferred cliffs where they breed. By stretching her neck, this female is signaling that she is still single. The nesting places at the most precipitous points are taken up first. Northern gannets have great difficulty taking off from flat ground. The ones that have found a partner start their courtship ritual, fencing or billing. And these are already one stage further. There are more than two pairs nesting on a square meter. Head shaking in Gannet language means, look, I've built a nest for you. The streamlined body is a sure indication that northern gannets feed by making high-speed dives into the sea. At speeds of up to 100 kilometers an hour, they plunge into the water to catch fish. The starting point in the food chain for the fish, and therefore for all the gannets and seals, are tiny marine life forms called zooplankton. Although far larger, jellyfish are zoologically also plankton, because according to the definition, it includes all organisms that can't swim against the current. One of the many amazing facts in nature is that the largest animals in the sea feed off the smallest. The basking shark, that can grow to 10 meters in length and weigh up to four tons, is the second largest fish in the world after the whale shark. It allows the water to run through its enormous mouth and out through its gills, filtering out the plankton. As much as 1,800 tons of water pass through its gills every hour. Every year, at the beginning of the summer, the coastline of Brittany is a meeting place for these giants of the sea. They're attracted by the plankton bloom. Pouting need not fear the basking sharks because at 30 centimeters, they're far too big. But long-finned pilot whales, on the other hand, hunt fish, but preferably cuttlefish. They will even dive several hundred meters to find them. Here, though, they can find plenty of accessible food in the upper regions of the seawater. The coastline of Brittany provides for them all, from the harbor seals to the basking sharks. The terrible oil contamination that occurred 40 years ago has fortunately left no trace of the devastation. Thanks to the work of many helpers and the remarkable self-cleaning capability of nature, the wildest coastline in Europe is back to what it has always been, a paradise, and not only for seals.